Hello, today we're starting a brand new topic, P5A, which is all about forces. Now the first thing I want to talk about are contact and non-contact forces. So forces essentially are pushes and pulls caused by a whole variety of things which we're going to discuss in this topic. Uh, but before we get any further, we need to split all the physical quantities we know into two kinds, vectors and scalars. Now, scalars you're probably very familiar with. These are quantities that only have magnitude. Direction is meaningless for these values. So things like the temperature. It doesn't make any sense to say that it is 25 degrees Celsius north. Or it, we're good. I don't know, the temperature in this room is 273 Kelvin up. That, that doesn't make any sense. The temperature itself does, but there's no need to assign a direction to it. The same with speed, things like meters per second or kilometers per hour. It, those are independent of direction. It doesn't matter which way you're going, as long as you're traveling in that, where, whichever way you may be going, at a certain number of meters per second. We're going to talk about the difference between distance and displacement in a moment. Um, these are a vector and a scalar version of essentially the same concept, um, as you'll see in a moment. Mass, again, is scalar. There's no need to assign direction to it. Um, if you're ever finding yourself a little bit cool short as to what a, what a scalar is, if you just think about money, let's move that up for a moment. If you just think about money, then um, money is a scalar quantity. And, and we're very familiar with handling money and you know exchanging money for goods and whatnot. So if you're a little bit stuck for what a scalar is, think about money, and that should you know help you remember that it's a quantity that only has magnitude and does not have direction. The other side of the coin, huh, here are vectors. Vectors have both magnitude and a direction. Um, and some examples are forces, displacement, acceleration, and momentum. Forces always act in a particular direction. So if you're going to, going to describe a force to somebody, you will always be in need of describing the, the direction. So any time you're given a force, the say 10 newtons, that answer itself implies a certain direction to that force. You cannot have a force acting in no direction. That's, that's meaningless. It's a bit like saying that you're standing facing in no direction. No matter where you are, whether you're lying down or standing up, you're always facing in a direction. Okay, so distance versus displacement. What I have here is essentially the short version of Lord of the Rings. So we know they start off in the Shire and they go a few places and end up at Mordor. Yeah, well, Mount Doom, but close enough. Um, now, the red line here represents the distance that they travelled. If I took this line and straightened it out and, and led it next to a ruler, that would tell me the total distance that the, the Fellowship of the Ring travelled during the story Lord of the Rings. But that's not the same thing as their displacement. Now, their displacement is the straight line distance from where they started to where they ended up. And at different points in the in, in this journey, um, actually their displacement doesn't increase at all. Sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. So the simplest displacement would simply be from the beginning to the end of their journey. So from Mordor to the Shire, it should be a straight line. I haven't got a ruler to hand right now. That's about as close as I can get. Um, that distance there, which you can see is appreciably shorter than the distance, that is the displacement, which is literally how far away are you from a particular point in space that you're then referring to. Now displacement has a direction. This displacement here is different from the displacement from where my finger now is to the Shire, which is different from where my finger now is to the Shire. If I was just measuring distance, this distance is the same as this distance is the same as this distance. So displacement cares about which direction uh, an object has travelled in. For instance, the displacement from the Shire to here. Let's say let's say that that's Rohan. To be honest, I, I don't know the first thing about the geography of Middle Earth. This will just have to do. So the displacement between there and the Shire. Let's say that was, I don't know, 
20 leagues. Not exactly an SI unit, but it will do for now. And then if we consider the straight distance displacement from the Shire to maybe here, which maybe that's the murky swamp, those two displacements are exactly the same. In terms of the distance they've traveled, well, they've traveled a lot further to get to the murky swamp than they have to get to Rohan. But in terms of their displacement, how far from the Shire are they? It's a, again, they've traveled exactly the same displacement. Different distance, the same displacement. All forces can be split up into two categories. Forces that require two objects to be touching before they act, and forces that do not require the two objects to be touching for the, for the force to act. So contact forces, a lot of these we're quite familiar with, are things like the normal contact force, which is simply the force that prevents two solid objects from sinking into one another. Anytime an object, like my pen here, is resting on another one, the fact that this pen is not sinking through the table means there must be a normal contact force acting up and balancing the weight of the pen. So that's the normal contact force. It's called the normal contact force because it acts at a right angle to the surface, much like a normal line would if you think back to when you looked at reflection and wave in year eight. Then we've got friction. Again, friction is a contact force. It only acts when two objects are touching. Um, and it's the, act, it's the force that resists motion uh, as two objects pass each other. Then you've got air resistance. Air resistance um, is the force that resists motion when an object moves through air because of all the air particles that are being pushed out of the way as an object moves through. Then you've got tension. Tension is, if you think about it as the strength of a, of a string, Tension is the force that, as I pull on this pen, prevents it from breaking into two pieces. Then the other kind you have are non-contact forces. These do not require the two objects to be touching. So things like gravitational forces, uh, this pen is still attracted to, to Earth even here when it's not touching the ground. And it still will be once it's fallen down and hit the table. Magnetic forces, I think we've all experienced before, you're holding two magnets together and they'll either repel or attract, and they'll do that before they start touching. And lastly, electrostatic forces. If you've seen that, uh, that little demonstration where somebody puts their hand on, when somebody puts their hand on a Van de Graaff generator and you see their hair standing on end, well the reason their hair is standing on end is because there are, because there are positive charges on all of the hairs and those positive charges are repelling each other, they're pushing away from each other. And therefore they stand on end as they're pushed as far away from each other as possible. Just to run through some examples of the normal contact force, here we have a line, um, just like you'd find in your lime tree. Um, you can see the blue line we have here is representing the force of of weight. This is the force by which the lime is pulled down towards the ground because of gravity. The light blue line that is equal in length but acting in an opposite direction is the normal contact force. So this lime is not accelerating downward or upward in, and to be honest it's probably just lying on the ground. In a similar sessile situation, stationary situation, we've got a sleeping student here on a desk. So the head of the student will have a weight acting on it, pulling it towards the ground, but this student's head is not moving, and it's not, it's not accelerating towards the ground um, as it otherwise would, because the table is applying an equal and opposite normal contact force, um, preventing the head from accelerating downwards. Even an object that's moving, like this basketball here, if you imagine this is rolling across the ground, even as it's rolling across the ground, there is a, a, a force of weight acting down on the basketball. And as that force of weight is acting down, there is an equal and opposite normal contact force acting up 
and preventing the basketball from accelerating down any more. It's still continuing to move along the surface, but it won't be moving down into the surface any further. Well, I hope this has helped. Um, if you can leave any comments or questions you have uh, underneath the video, or pop and see me in school with anything you're not sure of, um, I'll see you next lesson. Goodbye.